So the Doctor Who Stranded series from Big Finish is a quadrilogy that stars Paul McGann as the Eighth Doctor, and we've known that Stranded Part 4 is coming out in the coming weeks and coming months. Now, Stranded and current Eighth Doctor stuff, unless it is explicitly detached from everything going on in the Eighth Doctor's story arc, shall we say. For example, the Peladon box set that had a great Eighth Doctor story, the Time Lord Victorious Paul McGann stories, which were really strong. That was a great trilogy of, of stories, really fun, really solid. The last one, Mutually Assured Destruction, is basically Die Hard, but the Eighth Doctor is John McClane, and the terrorists are the Daleks. It was really fun. But for Stranded, um, I've not gotten into this because as I understand it, and I'm sure people will be able to recommend it, some people will be able to say, you know, you don't you don't need to have the prerequisite. My mind doesn't work like that. I kind of need to know what's come before to get the most out of it. I would rather have the prerequisite. I don't want to miss out. But for um, but for Stranded, it's the Eighth Doctor stuck in 21st century London, specifically Baker Street, with some companions. And I believe it takes place after the events of Ravenous, which takes place after the events of Dark Eyes, which takes place after the events of um, the Eighth Doctor Adventures with Lucy Miller. I, I'm sure I'm missing something in between, but that, I think, is part of the issue. This They follow on from each other to an extent. You could technically recommend Series 3 of Doctor Who to me, but personally, I would rather watch Series 1 and Series 2 of Doctor Who before getting to Series 3, even though I could technically jump onto it later. But for S Stranded is something I've just not really been that interested in. But over the course of the Stranded box sets, we've had Tom Baker reprising his his role from the day of the doctor the 50th anniversary special alex edwards says don't forget doom coalition that was the one i was missing doom coalition and that's part of the problem very expensive very lengthy stories like i think all of them are quadrilogy box sets that's an 80 to 120 pound investment if they're not on sale that's just download only no i'm not yet i will find my time <laughs> um, but anyway, so Stranded, there's the curator, played by the fourth Doctor, Tom Baker. We've also got PC Andy from Torchwood. This is, oh, these are some pretty deep cuts. And we've had news of Stranded 4. Stranded 4 is going to see, apparently, Tom Baker's curator ha have regenerated or has changed, whatever, into an older Colin Baker. And this seems to be the year of Colin Baker. Dr. Bonnie says, so this is the last part. Yes, th this is the last of the Stranded stories, but I'm, I'm certain that they have another quadrilogy set up. As Russell Chetchen says, a quadrilogy of quadrilogies. And I think when they announce what's coming next after Stranded, it will be a pentology? A pentology of quadrilogies. <laughs> oh, it's a rabbit hole. It is a deep rabbit hole british tin dog nanny yes colin baker this is the year of colin baker even more of me the w uh, wng fan in chat says the curator regenerates here's the thing i don't know all we know is that it's not tom baker it is colin baker as the curator it's in a story by uh, Matt Fitton called Cross Lines. Uh, the Doctor interrupts a pivotal journey for young Robin, while Tanya and Helen, I have no idea who these three are, are caught up in events past and present. As the timeline dissolves and the void encroaches, the Doctor's friends ask the curator for help, but he's not the man he was. Whether or not he regenerates, or if he's been stuffed in a cupboard, and it's a Colin Baker, it's Colin Baker's character in that Emmerdale episode when he's obsessed with the jigsaw puzzles, okay? Let's get down to business, shall we? <laughs> and K.A. says, not to be a killjoy, but I wish, I wish future incarnations would be kept a mystery. That's the issue, I think, with that. This would have been such a great twist. Like, I'm not going to spoil it here in chat, I don't want you to spoil it either, but that twist in Dalek Universe 1, that was great to have that not spoiled to have that surprise cast member just no no sign like we we didn't know they were coming and i kind of wish that they'd done that I, I have no personal investment in stranded at this time other than i will probably be listening to this in like 10 years time stranded one had uh the uh, curator and, and set the scene and everything stranded two had john Corshaw as the brigadier and also the curator as well stranded three had the jadoon 
and Stranded 4 has got Colin Baker as the curator and will conclude the story. Uh, Nicola Walker, Hattie Morana, uh, Rebecca Root, Tom Price, Avita J, Colin Baker joining the cast with, of course, Paul McGann. This is a great picture of Paul McGann, by the way. Look at that, like, like, like smug face. That's great. I, I do like this look for the Eighth Doctor. Um, so, yeah, we've got a quadrilogy of stories in this fourth installment of Stranded. Cross Lines by Matt Fittum, which I've already read. Get Andy by Lisa McMullen. The Doctor resolves to make a difference and save one life in particular, but someone else is making a beeline for Sergeant Andy Davidson. Mr. Bird has something to prove and he will go to any extremes to do it. The Keys of Baker Street by Roy Gill. Now, Roy Gill, as far as I'm concerned, can do no wrong. But homing in on the root of the problem, the Doctor attempts a risky solution and disaster strikes. Soon, 107 Baker Street is all that's left of reality, as the residents climb the floors to face their destiny. That sounds pretty cool. Best Year Ever by John Dorney. What happens if the world is actually fixed? There are times when even the Doctor cannot help, and whatever the outcome, Liv and Tanya have a decision to make. So, yeah, you can get all four stranded sets in a bundle, but that's still £80, and this is not even, like, this isn't even the complete story, all of the stranded. You've got all of the Eighth Doctor stuff, which is a hell of a, uh, a hell of a minefield. So I, I have been making my way through the Eighth Doctor and Charlie Pollard stuff. He does have two adventures that are dropping later this year as well. Um coming in November and December, so Paul McGann is going to end the year. So, yeah, the Time Lord Victoria stuff was really, really good. So, yeah, a lot. it's a good time to be a McGann fan, but it means that it is a massive uh, rabbit hole. The Gurkha is £80. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. And this is kind of why Big Finish is so alienating to many people, not just the price. I, I'm not saying, oh, oh, no. Oh no, oh no, as I was saying this, 8th Doctor deals, what are the big finish deals? Uh, I have almost all of these. The Skull of Sobek, Grand Theft Cosmos, and The Vengeance of Morbius. Yeah, the 8th Doctor adventures have been going on since like 2000, to, like, around 20 years of consistent releases. So there's definitely a whole... Uh, I, what do you call it? It's the it's it's like a sunk cost, but it's like there's so much stuff. I don't know if I'll ever want to get into it. Shadowmaster says you didn't even mention the Time War series. Oh God, there is a Time War series. Ah, there is. There's so much. So whereas like the fourth doc, the the War Doctor, that felt like a much easier nut to crack. There's only like four box sets with John Hurt. Four really good box sets as well the war doctor begins is great but you don't have to have listened you can pick and choose but i think because we're the eighth doctor with one adventure leading to another it does look really alienating from the outside scott jarrett says i wish big finish would do a subscription service every month you can pick like four stories to listen to they did that for the monthly adventures at some point uh, you can't do it anymore but they did used to have a subscription uh a subscription service yeah doctor who subscriptions this is still on the on the website even though they're no longer doing doctor who the monthly adventures maybe you can get you can like get back orders or something i don't know but either way they've discontinued the monthly adventures so i don't quite know what's what what what, what the plan is here so yeah be, because there's so like for example i want to get into one piece but i have that's a thousand episodes of anime that's thousands of chapters of manga I, it's not something I think I'd be able to get into, just in terms of pure time. Scott Jarrett says the website is honestly a bit confusing to navigate. A little bit, yeah, for example, if you go to the Eighth Doctor collection, it starts you at the beginning of Lucy Miller, when you've got all of Charlie Pollard beforehand. You've got, like, a few, like, a dozen at least, of, like, Charlie Pollard stories as well. Does this Eighth Doctor collection even have the time war but yeah it, yeah dark eyes doom coalition it's got new doctors uh, new monsters classic doctors which is pretty good but yeah it looks like there's no time war there's this time war story but that's a short yeah okay it does have time war it does but <laughs> there's there's a lot here there's there's a lot which i think you know, credit to Big Finish for making it work, and it's clearly a sustainable business model for them. But it's a case of, um, 
a saturation within their own market, I think. And like, even looking ahead, for example, like you look at uh, next month's releases, this month, I should say, if, if this becomes a segment in March, you've got the 8th of March 2, you've got a fourth Doctor box set, you've got Unit Nemesis 2, you've got The Mind of Hodiak, which is probably the big, big finish release of next month because it's the Russell T. Davis story. And Torchwood is there as well. And, of course, they've got a Avengers uh, audiobook, which I, you know, I don't know anything about the Avengers, but, yeah, there's 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 just a lot. There's a, there's an awful lot. British Tim Dogs' URTD audio story. Yeah, yeah, this is the one that he, like, found in his drawer while doing the Doctor Who watch-alongs, which, according to Twitter, like, ended a year ago last year so this has been this has been in the making because this is clearly the year of colin baker we did get a cover for their upcoming unbound story genesis where the colin baker is the war doctor so there's that of course so yeah this is the year of colin baker this is the year of colin baker and i i drink to that of course but i am concerned about big finish saturation so pinto rizvi says there's a very interesting curator quote from david richardson in that article let's take a look when producer David Richardson spoke to Stephen Moffat about the curator, the intention was that he is a fluid character, so he's someone who can wear different faces as the mood takes him. What's nice is that this also reflects changes in the story. History is in flux, so the curator's face is one of those things that sh that's changing around the Doctor and his friends as they try to fix everything. I guess that's pretty cool in that you can kind of have multi-doctor stories without having to commit to this is definitely the sixth doctor and you know it allows the doctor the actors to be like visually more themselves as opposed to the <laughs> the amount of um stock photos or high quality photos from decades ago making up the covers let's see sixth doctor collection let's go to recent first yeah, th these these photos which we've seen time and time again on covers. They've had to be really inventive with the Sixth Doctor though, because obviously he only had two seasons in the classic series, so there's not nearly as many production stills of him. But they've been clever. But you, there's definitely some recycling going on here. There's de there's definitely some, and also very clever photoshopping. I'm always intrigued by this one, Order of the Daleks with the stained glass Dalek. I imagine this being like twenty feet tall. I don't know if it's actually that tall. I, here's the thing. Who is this person? Who is Lisa Greenwood? They've given the Sixth Doctor so many companions over the... And that's great, of course. But it also, just further, is a rabbit hole within a rabbit hole. Like, Evelyn as well. WG fan, carrot juice, carrot juice, carrot juice. Yeah, I'm glad that because of Big Finish, the legacy of the Sixth Doctor is more than that and he's actually got a regeneration story the last adventures but it's uh yeah it's still a one hell of a rabbit hole because the time lord says i feel like the website needs a continuity page where they explain their own characters and plot lines i honestly feel like if they did that in writing it would further alienate people just seeing it all there it might further alienate them 